Welcome to section 4 of chapter 3. We will be talking about density in this section of the chapter. Here's a question for you to ponder. Which would you rather carry, a pound of lead or a pound of feathers? A lot of people get fooled by this question and think, oh, well, a pound of feathers is going to be much lighter. But notice they said you have a pound of each. So what's really the difference? Which one would be more difficult to carry and why would it be more difficult to carry it? You have the same weight of both. You have a pound of each. So which one would you rather carry? If you want to answer this question, you need to really understand density. In the case of a pound of feathers versus a pound of lead, lead is a much more dense substance. So a pound would take up a lot less space. It would be much easier to carry, whereas a pound of feathers would take up a lot of space and would probably be flying all over the place and, and more awkward to carry it. Why do the plants shown in the picture on the right float on water? If you said it's because they are less dense than the surrounding water, then you're right. Why does a helium balloon rise? Does this have anything to do with density? Remember that air is also a fluid medium. So when balloons are surrounded by air and the balloons are not filled with air themselves but are filled with helium, Helium has a very low mass compared to the air that would be in its place if we had filled it with air. So you have a lot less mass in the same amount of space and therefore the balloons have low density and that's why they float upward when filled with helium. All of the following samples shown in this diagram have a mass of 10 grams. However, this mass takes up a different amount of space for each substance. Notice that the metal lithium takes up the most space of the three substances shown. Its volume is 19 cubic centimeters for the, those 10 grams. It has a density then of only 0.53 grams per cubic centimeter. On the other hand, when we have 10 grams of water, it only takes up 10 cubic centimeters of space, which gives us a density of 1 gram per cubic centimeter and lead being a very dense substance, its 10 grams takes up a very small amount of space, only 0.88 cubic centimeters, so less than one cubic centimeter, giving it a density of 11.4 grams per cubic centimeter. How do we calculate density? It can be calculated from the mass and the volume using the formula shown here. Density can be found by taking mass divided by the volume of a sample. Although both mass and volume are extensive properties, meaning they depend upon the size of the sample, density is not an extensive property. It is an intensive property, meaning it does not change as the sample size changes. So density can be used to help identify the composition of an object while mass and volume by themselves cannot. They depend on the size of the sample. Each substance has its own density which is different from that of any other substance. It's not going to change if the temperature and the pressure stay the same. In these tables, we can see values of densities for various solid, liquid, and gaseous substances and mixtures. We do have some mixtures here. Air is a mixture. Wood would definitely be a mixture also. The rest of those are pure substances. Notice that for several of the solid substances, aluminum, lead, gold, you see that their densities are much higher than that of water, 2.7 for aluminum, 11.3 for lead, and 19.3 for gold. Ice, which is the solid form of water, is less dense than liquid water. It's only 0.93. Liquids, on the other hand, water is 1.00, and you may think that that's low density, but there are many other liquids that have lower densities than water, such as ethanol, which is 0.94, and methanol, which is 0.79 grams per cubic centimeter. Air, being the only gas in this table, has a much lower density because there's a lot of space between those particles. So its density is only 0.0013 grams per cubic centimeter. The bottom table shows a variety of different substances that you might be able to find around your home or easily purchase so that you could create something known as a density column where you can see Several different liquids have been added into a container and they remain separated because of density differences. So you could create a density column using some of these substances which have different colors and makes the column look nicer. Here we see Archimedes popping up again. 
This time, he was able to show King Hiram II that his crown was not made of pure gold like he was told. The goldsmith had told him that the crown was made of pure gold. I'm assuming that the king probably told the goldsmith that he wanted his crown made of pure gold. The goldsmith probably told him that wasn't a good idea, but the king was adamant about it. So, the goldsmith, not wanting the crown to start looking bad in no time because it was too soft since it was made of pure gold, told the king that he made it of pure gold, but mixed in other substances to make the gold harder and less likely to bend out of shape. He then charged the king pure gold price so that the king would be satisfied that it was made of pure gold. However, Archimedes showed that it wasn't pure gold by comparing its density to that of a bar that he knew was pure gold and showed that those densities were different and was able to prove to the king that he had been cheated by the goldsmith. Now, I don't know if you know much about history, but cheating a king generally is frowned upon because they have the power to do a lot of really bad things to you. So I don't know exactly what he did in this case, but I wouldn't have cheated the king like that. I would have just suggested that he go to someone else if he wanted it made of pure gold because it would not stay shaped the way he wanted it. Now remember that density depends upon two factors, mass and volume. Now mass is a constant for an object. However, the volume of space occupied by the object can change, and that depends on what the temperature is and what the pressure is. Because there's little space between particles in both solids and liquids, it really takes quite a bit of change of temperature and pressure to affect the density of materials in the solid or liquid state. However, gas densities can be greatly affected by these changes because of the huge amount of empty space between the gaseous particles. So a gas can be condensed down into a much smaller volume so that the same matter takes up a much smaller amount of space and therefore the density is going to be increased when that happens. So gas densities can vary quite a bit. Here we see two tables that are both density tables for air. The one on the top shows air densities as the temperature of that air is changed, starting from very cold temperatures of negative 20 degrees Celsius where air has a density of 1.395 kilograms per cubic meter. Going up, we hit room temperature at about 20 degrees Celsius, having a density of about 1.2. And if we take it clear up to the boiling point of water, 100 degrees Celsius, we see that air's density decreases clear down to 0.946 kilograms per cubic meter. Notice the huge change in density there. But although temperature can make a big change, if you look in the bottom table, we see here pressure effects. And we'll ignore that middle column for now because it's in pounds per cubic feet and we like to work in kilograms per cubic meter, the standard units. At sea level, air has a density of about 1.2 kilograms per cubic meter. But as you go further and further up in the atmosphere, up to 5,000 feet, you get to a density of about 1.1 kilogram per cubic meter. And as you go further up, eventually getting to 35,000 feet, that density is clear down to 0.379 kilograms per cubic meter. Now the temperature does change a bit as you rise through the atmosphere to that level. However, the pressure is what's really causing the biggest difference here. For most substances, as the temperature increases, the density will decrease. That's an inverse relationship. Water is one notable exception to this rule. If ice were more dense than liquid water, then it would sink. That means marine life would die as water froze from the bottom up and there was no liquid water in which it could survive. Here's a neat application of density differences. Density differences are responsible for substances floating or sinking when placed in another material. We can see that demonstrated in this thermometer at the right, which we'll discuss a little more in just a moment. Density differences are also responsible for the change in your voice when you inhale helium. Now looking back at the Galilean thermometer and how it actually works that we saw on the previous slide, Galilean thermometers have partially filled sealed glass bubbles that are attached to metal tags. They've been weighted so that they will float at the temperature indicated on the tag. As air temperature rises, that changes the temperature of the water also. That causes the water to expand, so the water's density decreases. The relative densities of the bubbles and the surrounding water is what determines whether a bubble floats up. It floats up if it's less dense than its surroundings. 
or it would sink to the bottom or stay at the bottom if it is more dense than its surroundings. So you can see in these two examples at the top that on the left side, the one with the tag that says 76 degrees is the one that's floating and therefore we know it's 76 degrees. On the right, we can see that it is 72 degrees because the 72 degree marker is floating. Some liquids are more dense than others. We saw that in a table earlier. When you pour them together, liquids that are more dense will sink while less dense liquids will rise. We can see that in this density column shown at the bottom of the page. What's interesting here is that we have nine different liquids of various colors so you can see the separation between the different layers. They're all listed on the left there. We have several different solids that have been put in there and these solids will settle out within the layer that they are closest to in density. That ping pong ball being filled with a gas has a very low density and therefore it just floats on top. The soda cap is barely visible in that blue layer, so its density is about that of rubbing alcohol, but less dense than the vegetable oil. There are some plastic beads on the left side of that clear vegetable oil layer, and a cherry tomato is clearly visible in the dish soap layer that's yellow. It's very difficult to see the dye that's shown in the white layer, but it is there. There's a popcorn kernel floating right at the boundary between the maple syrup and the corn syrup towards the right side of that column. And finally, the other solid, the last solid, is a bolt. And being made up of a dense metal, it has sunk clear to the bottom of the lowest layer, the honey. Let's try a density problem. The density of gold is 19.3 grams per cubic centimeter at 20 degrees Celsius. Question is, what's the mass of a gold ring that has a volume of 0.18 cubic centimeters? First thing that we do is begin with setting up the problem. We can see that we have 0.18 cubic centimeters of volume to work with. We also have the fact that the density of gold is 19.3 grams per cubic centimeter. Now this can be used to set up a conversion factor, either putting 19.3 grams over 1 cubic centimeter or putting 1 cubic centimeter over 19.3 grams. Which way we choose to set it up is going to depend upon which way is going to allow the units to cancel and give us the units we want. We want mass units, so we want to end up in grams. We need to cancel the cubic centimeters. As can be seen, to get the cubic centimeters to cancel, we need to put the one cubic centimeter on the bottom. Then the rest of the conversion factor would be the 19.3 grams that goes on top. Cubic centimeters would cancel, and multiplying 0.18 times 19.3, our calculator tells us 3.474. However, if you recall significant <laughs> figures, we know that in multiplying these two numbers, we will be limited to just two significant figures, by that value of 0.18. That means we actually would report a value of about 3.5 grams. There are a variety of other density problems that you can try overnight, and tomorrow in class we will go over these and see how you did.